Welcome everybody to round two, session number two with Yarwood's Martial Arts and Less is More Coaching. And today we are going to be discussing something that is not spoken about uh, or not taught anywhere. It's not taught in schools um, and it's seldom being taught by parents these days. And that is decorum, common sense, and some of what I call the basic skills to get you through life. So today, Mr. Yarwood is going to be starting with the conversation about life skills. And we are going to work our way through 11 life skills over the course of the next several weeks and discuss the impact of that life skill, how it's implemented, the results as he has been leading these life skills now for over a decade. And I think this is going to be an opportunity for you not only to watch this video, perhaps to have your kids watch this video, but also to have you see the value and interest in getting into martial arts. So with that, I'm going to hand the mic over to you, Mr. Yarwood. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have to start off with we uh, our main focus at Yards Martial Arts. While we do technically do Taekwondo, uh, we use that as a conduit to teach a lot more uh, about real life. And our our students are learning life skills uh, in every class. Every time they're in class, every time I interact with them, I try and, and instill something in them that they're going to take with them, not just when they leave the dojo, but hopefully the rest of their life. And I also um, empower the parents to be able to use these life skills as well when they're teaching their children because ultimately they spend the most time with them. They have the most influence on them. And if they have the uh, the tools that we provide for them, that gives them an extra, an extra edge up on uh, getting their kids to understand um, what life is going to be like. Uh, ultimately, we are getting kids ready for real life. So we put out, you know, once they grow up and put them out into society, we want them to be productive members. So if they're learning life skills now and they understand what those life skills mean and how they apply to their lives, uh, they're going to be a, a much better for it as they, as they go out into the real world. So first of all, I'm just going to start with listing off the life skills that we, that we teach. And then I'm going to focus in on one specific one today. So I'm going to start with the first one, goals. Goals is something we have, a, first of all, we have a phrase for every life skill that we do. Uh, so it kind of teaches the kids about what that life skill means and also helps to them remember it with a phrase. So first of all, goals. Goals is um, something to strive for. So that's getting ahead in life, finding, setting plans for yourself, setting the map, roadmap to get where you need to go. Um, respect is, is something, how we treat each other and how we treat ourselves. So um, just the way we speak to each other, the way we bow, we say uh, sir and ma'am to each other, those types of things. Next is integrity. Uh, integrity is how you act um, when you are not only with people, but when you are by yourself as well, what you do, how you act in, in life. Next up is uh, perseverance. Perseverance is never give up, never quit. We talk about that a lot because um, our kids have – have these moments where they just don't want to continue. They want to stop. They're having a hard time. So we talk about perseverance and never giving up. Then we go to belief. Belief is our phrase for that is, yes, I can. We believe in ourselves. We know that we can do the things we want to do, things that we set our minds to, and then we can achieve those with that, with that belief. And then next up is um, communication. Communication comes in two different forms. There's a a verbal communication when we're having a conversation with each other, but there's also nonverbal communication and, and what our our body language and, and our face and eyes and, and all that stuff say to each other. So we can, we work on making sure that kids understand that not only what we say, but what we do is communicating to others around us. Next up is, uh, is discipline. Discipline is um, always doing what what is right, right? When we talk about discipline for our school in particular, we talk about uh, the most important thing is self-discipline. So self-discipline is doing the things you know you're supposed to do without having to be told to do them, uh, whether that's your daily chores or whatever the case may be. We work on having those kids understand that they have to have discipline in their lives in order to move ahead, get ahead in life. 
Uh, next up is attitude. Attitude is how we act, how we present ourselves, the what we what we say, what we show, what our like we talk about with communication, what our body language is. Having a positive attitude gets us much further ahead. Gets us having people around us to enjoy us being around them. So we have a uh, we make sure what we call a black belt attitude when we come into our school and we display that to all of our students, all of our parents. Um, and then focus. Focus is paying attention uh, on what it is that you're doing specifically at the time. And that's not to mean that you're going to lose focus on other things. But if we start to get too scatterbrained, we start to try and worry about other stuff, we're going to miss some things. So we talk about focus and paying attention to what it is that you're working on currently and, and making sure that that's being uh, taken care of. Um, the next one is confidence, how we carry ourselves how we talk about ourselves, how we say about things about ourselves. Like if we're getting ready for a, 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 which we have a testing tomorrow, what do we have the confidence to go into that testing? Know that we did everything we could to get ready for that test to do the best that we very, uh, very best that we can when that happens. We just had a tournament as well. Kids going to the ring with that confidence that all the training that they've done is leading them to the point where they're going to do everything that they can uh, when they get on that map. And then finally, dedication. Dedication to our craft, dedication to our work, dedication to ourselves, to our parents, to our families, to our country, all those things. Um, showing that that we have that that loyalty to everything that we're doing we're not, and that it uh, is for not only for us, but for everybody else around us. So um, with that being said, that's our list of 11 life skills. Today, we're going to focus specifically on one. So when we do our our, uh, our what we call our testing cycles. Our testing cycles usually last eight weeks. And within that eight weeks, we focus on one particular life skill. And then we take that life skill and we talk to the kids about what that life skill means. We give them the phrase that goes along with that life skill. But more importantly, we have them um, tell us how they're implementing that life skill in their in their regular life. So right now we're gonna we're working on goals. So when we say goals, it's something we say it's something to strive for. Our our whole ranking belt ranking system is a goal setting system. It's designed for kids to be able to implement their goals into uh, earning their next belt. And then we take that those uh, those examples of earning your belts and we apply it to their to their real life. So, for example, when we uh, are when somebody comes into our school, typically most people's goal when they walk into a martial arts school and start training is black belt. So in order to get the black belt, you have to have a roadmap to get you there. You can't just walk in and then one day you become a black belt. You got to know how to get there. You need to know what's going on. So um, we put up a whole a whole roadmap for these kids to be able to be able for them to know and see when it is they're going to be testing for the black belt and what it takes to get there. So each rank that they do, they spend uh, pretty much they spend 16 weeks at each rank. So that way. Um, they're learning all the basics and all the foundational work that goes into earning that rank. And then uh, once they get that rank, then they move on to the next one. Within those two ranks, they have to earn um, what we call stripes along the way. And along uh, each one of those stripes has to do with something in particular that they're going to be working on that testing cycle towards uh, testing for their next rank. So the first one they're going to work on is um, is a red stripe, which is earning their, uh, or sorry, learning their new moves. So they have to practice those moves. They have to set goals to be able to get in front of a, an instructor and show the instructor that they know those moves, that they've been practicing, that the technique looks good. Um, and then the next one they earn after that is the white stripe. So after they learn all those moves, we teach them the form that goes along with those moves. And they go, uh, our forms go anywhere from 18 moves all the way up to 63 in the color belt ranks. Um, so they have to take that, that form and practice it and memorize it. And then we watch them do that form. And then we also look at the technique that they practice with the red stripe and be able to apply that to the form that they're doing. So we make sure that they're understanding how the form works, where the corners are, where the turns are, what the kicks are, all that kind of stuff. And then they start to figure out, okay, it takes all of these moves into my form that's going to create that form for me to memorize. And then that's what I'm going to be ultimately testing with when it comes down to testing time. Um, we also have a black stripe, which is what we call our knowledge stripe. The knowledge is about taekwondo, what they're learning, what they're training, what they're practicing. We talk about what our organization, 
what it means, what it stands for. Uh, we talk about again about our life skill and how it applies to them in their daily life. How can they use the new life skill that they've learned uh, outside of the dojo? So that way we make sure that they're they're understanding that life skill. So they're setting the goal for okay, at their they're at school or at they're at home. They're setting goals for themselves uh, along the way. Um, we also do a community service stripe, which is our purple stripe. For us, that's very important that they're understanding how to give to people or give to organizations without any expectation of getting something in return. So with that purple stripe, we set the goal for them that they have to do at least two events of community service every testing cycle. So essentially it turns out to be one a week. Now we don't require them to do um, something like, you know, they have to go to Feed My Starving Children or some formal uh, charity. They can they can help out in their neighborhood. They can help their elderly neighbor take out the trash. They can organize their community to go and pick up you know trash at up in the local park or in their neighborhood or or whatever it is. That we encourage kids to be um, to be thoughtful about it and 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 come up with things on their own that they are going to be doing the things that that are you know community service oriented so you know, we empower them to get out into their communities and be part of their community and give to their community so that's where we come with goals comes into play with the purple stripe and then uh, our yellow stripe which is probably our most important stripe that they are going to earn is um, what we call at home stripe but essentially it's for at home and at school everything that happens outside of the dojo so we set goals for them to be able to increase or sorry in uh um, make their grades better to progress in school to be good students in school um, not just academically but be good leaders in school so their goals um when it comes to that are are to lead their friends their peers in making their school a better place to be ultimately by leading and showing uh, by example what being uh, a leader is and doing their work and teach, uh, treating their teachers with respect and their peers with respect and the, the lunch lady with respect, everybody who's there, the janitor, everybody gets treated with respect, right? So we want to yes, make sure sir. they're understanding that. Um, so that's the, the, the school piece. And then they can actually set a goal to have me come into their uh, into their classroom and teach their friends what it is that they learn at Taekwondo, not just the physical, of course, the uh, the life skills that go along with that. So they're, if they uh, talk to their teacher and have me come in, they set a goal for me to come in on a day and just kind of hang out with them and teach them all the things that we do at our school. And then the next piece is, of that is the at-home part of it. So our, our for them, their goal is to every day, uh, do all the uh, chores that they know they're supposed to do, whether that be uh, cleaning their room, putting their toys away, cleaning the dishes, taking out the trash, all that stuff. Our goal for them is for them to do that every single day, <laughs> in the morning, make their bed, uh, eat breakfast, brush their teeth, take a shower, all those things, and the, 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 and not have mom and dad have to remind them all the time because they know what they're supposed to do. Um we're also trying to get them to become leaders within their family so they can show their mom and dad and brothers and sisters how to act. So that that entails maybe doing something extra that they don't normally do. Maybe a, maybe um, their chore is to put the dishes in the in the sink. Well, maybe the next level is, OK, take those dishes and put them in the dishwasher. Start the dishwasher. When the dishwasher is done, put the dishes away, those types of things. So go to that next level or maybe. Their job is to sweep the front step, but they take that to the next level and, you know, do some weeding and do some help out outside with dad uh, mowing the yard, whatever that case may be. But their goal is to step up and do something above and beyond what they're normally going to be doing. So that way they're they're starting to understand that in order to succeed in life, we have to know, uh, take care of things that we know need to get done without somebody always telling us what to do. So uh, when we set our goal for them, we teach them how to set goals. We teach them about what it means to, to not just say, I'm going to become a black belt, right? When that's not really ultimately a goal, that's just a dream. So when we take that, that down, we break it down and teach them all the different steps that go along the way. We talk about it in terms of like a roadmap. You know, if you're gonna be going to Disney World and you live in Minneapolis, how do you get to Disney World? What's the 
what's the map that gets you there? You don't just appear, right? You have to you have to set the plans. You have to do all that stuff and get ready. You have to save money so you can pay for things. All those different things are are goals that you set in order for you to go to Disney World. So um, we teach them how to break down their big goal in the smaller parts, manageable parts, and then every time they achieve that goal, they go to the next goal. Then they know to the, go to the next goal because they just they understand that there's really no the destination is one part of the whole process. So um, it's it's just a perfect opportunity using our belt system to teach kids how to set up goals and you know break them down into the tiniest little piece and that's manageable so that they have many accomplishments along the way on their way to the big goal. And then once they get to the big goal, then okay, now where do you go from there, right? Well, now you set another goal and then start all over again. So there's always constantly things in your life that you're doing along the way that's going to get you to the destination that you're looking for um, without a roadmap without a without you know anything in front of you you don't know where you're going so that's the easiest way for us to 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 have goals and what's fun about it is we have them set goals for themselves and us have them tell us what it is that they're doing and how they're getting there so that they understand what goal setting is and not just us telling them what they're supposed to do so um, it's it's vital that they understand the application of that. So that's goals. Uh, uh, one of our like, like right now, that's kind of what we're working on, and it applies to not just the kids, but we talk to parents about it too. We talk to our instructors about it. We talk to you know everybody involved in this whole thing, and they all are on the same page, so we all know what it is we're doing and where we're going and how we're going to get there. So. It, it applies to everything that we do, and that's that's the why life skills are so important in our in our teaching. What do you think, Coach Les? So here's the thing that I want to talk about now. For me, as I picture this, and as we go into goals, right? I'm I'm a total visionary. As a coach, one of the things that I put together is I have this big. I have a vision board and there's one in the upper left of my board behind me and here's another example so for me and this was from 2022 having goals and something to strive for is the only way to move ahead in life without goals the way that i look at it is we are either contract or we, we're either expanding or contracting and as i spend time meditating spend time for some people it's prayer for some time it's creating strat strategies with a team of people others it's just sitting and being still setting goals gives me parameters it gives me a set of con constructs for instance it's very easy inside of martial arts inside of uh you, you know we know what they are and that is we're going for belts and one of the things that i love about you mr yarwood is is this most people go, oh, I want to do martial arts and get to be a black belt. And then a lot of them get to the black belt and then they go, okay, I'm done and move on to the next thing. And for me, having had so many conversations with you, looking at it and learning, and this being the second time that I've stepped into martial arts in my life, I did it when I was back in my late 20s. I realize now it's not even about the, and, and this, some people that may be listening to this may go, I can't believe Coach Les just said that. It's not about the belts. It has nothing to do with the belts for me anymore. It, one, it has to do with me running up against my own fears, my own blockages along this journey. And maybe once we've gone through the life skills, we'll talk about some of our journey along the way and you know i set a goal i want to get this and i want to be there and then something happens 
And I, you know, have looked at what stopped me in the moment. And I find it has nothing to do with the practice, the belt test. It has to do with my own internal dialogues about what goals I had that were made up. They weren't even on paper anywhere. And because I didn't think I was ready, you know, here, here's one of those things. It's like, you know, Mr. Yarwood has goals for me, has a chat, a plan, and he's outside of my head, thank God. And <laughs> he, because there's a whole bunch of mess that goes on inside of my head based on my past. So to be able to step back and look and say, hey, I know the goals that he has for me and we've aligned our goals and now I have the comfort in being able to step back and go, okay, when I hit a wall, when I hit a breakdown, when I hit something, I can speak to my quote unquote coach. In this, in this case, you know, Mr. Yarwood, who is the instructor and owner of the martial arts studio. And I can expand my own view of my own goals in my own head which is where I fight the most and I do it in life. So for me, I get to see at 60 years old, I get to see where these little stops along the way in my life are being reignited as Mr. Yarwood is pushing me to attain my goals. And that's what I'm there for because it's taking me out into my job, into my own coaching business and having me level up, level up, level up. You know, I call myself an integrity coach and boy, what does that mean? Some people go, oh, so you have, you think you have integrity figured out? Are you kidding me? It, every day I figure out how little I know about integrity. And I continue to build that set goals for my own integrity. So thanks for, you know, bringing this all full circle for me, Mr. Yarwood, because it really has, yeah, I get that there's something about belts that drives people. And that has stopped being my drive. And the one thing that, I love about what you say is when you get your black belt, now you're equipped with all the basics to actually feel confident to move forward and learn the next level of what martial arts has to offer. And in these podcasts, video casts that we're doing to be able to see, and that's why I'm so excited about going through these life skills to be able to see that growth and development along the way, people are going to come on and go, wow, they're not even talking about martial arts right now. And it's like, yeah, you think we aren't. This is where martial arts works off the mats. Back over to you. Yeah, so uh, that's a, a big part of it is we kids and families do a lot of what they call activities. So they do sports like football, baseball, soccer, all those things. And those are all great, right? I don't have anything, any problem with those. I played football myself. My son plays basketball. But what's missing there is that connection to everything else that they do, right? They, they might learn a little bit of teamwork, and that's fine. But the, I, I, all the years I spent playing football, all the years my son's playing, spent playing basketball, there really wasn't any connection to once they were done, right? What do they do after their season is over? What do they do after their career is over? Where, where, what does what does it offer them, right? There's there's a little bit of here and there, but ultimately, you know, you played football and then you're done. And I learned, you know, I was I was a team member. Okay, great. Now what, right? What I look at martial arts as is the physical is first, but it's it's what gets you started on that journey and your life. Uh, your life skills are where all that stuff comes together and you understand 
that it takes work, it takes effort, that you you have social skills, you have, you know, um, the, the, the work ethic, the discipline, the structure, the training, all those things that you're learning. And you're, we're just applying it with martial arts, but it, it, it's way bigger than that. And one of the one of the things we have is, like you said, somebody sets a goal to be a black belt. Well, that's fine. But getting to black belt doesn't make you a black belt. Because once you start, we have, you know, people who they once they get their black belt, I'm done. Like, no, you, <laughs> that was your first goal. Now, OK, now you. If you don't ever even do the black belt form, you don't learn it. You just quit once you put that black belt around your waist. You really aren't applying everything that you learned to get to that point. You spent the last four years of your life applying your trade to become a black belt to learn all those forms, all that stuff, all the life skills, and then you stop. It, it, it's it's way bigger than that. It's, it's what you do. You know, you spend, you know, maybe a couple hours a week on the mats – but the rest of your time, you're out in the real world, and especially with these kids, if they're if they're not understanding that you know, martial arts is part of their life. It's part of what they do versus just an activity that they spend time on the mats. Um, then we're missing it. We got to we got to get them out and understanding that um, what they do is applying to their real life, and it's important that they that it that it gets in their heads that okay. How am I applying the life skills that, that all, all my instructors are teaching me? How did I, you know, set goals? How am I showing respect and discipline? So it's as much a part of their life as, as you know, going to school or what else, whatever else they're doing if they're, if they're applying the, the knowledge that we're giving them. I have my own goals. I set my own, you know, I have a lot of things that I'm doing too, and everything – in the last 11 years, actually 15 years, 16 years, I've been training. It's a lifestyle. It's how I am. It's who I am. It's it's what I present to the world and how I think about who I am as a person. Um, prior to martial arts, I when I look back, I don't really think I had any direction in where I want to go and what I want to do. And martial arts kind of helped me determine my my life trajectory based on learning all these things that I didn't really learn in life that I thought I knew but I really didn't until I really kind of started thinking it through and, and learning it through uh, martial arts not just learning it myself but teaching it as well I learned as much from the students as as they learned from me hopefully <laughs> that's awesome and I just want to share with you a couple comments Matt Klute just made nice guys very handy um, he's a fellow, he's a businessman, owns M4 Garage Door. For those of you that are ever looking for garage door opportunities to support and fix, uh, Matt Clute is the guy. And then also this, um, a friend of mine, Jeanette Vallis del Angel, who is, oof, as far as accounting and managing what I call the corporate world and currently the university world of financials. Um, she is the bomb. And she says, true, it's a part of work balance. And then I just put out, um, just to let people know, here are the martial arts life skills that Mr. Yarwood spoke about. Once again, attitude, respect, discipline, goals, integrity, perseverance, focus, confidence, dedication, communication, and belief. And we are going to be speaking about these over the course of the next few weeks. And what I love about this, uh, secondly, and, and, and hopefully we're not beating this too much, because to me, we could never have enough of this, is the fact that these martial arts offers an opportunity for skills in your life outside of the dojo, outside of wearing a, a, an outfit and practicing and getting different colored belts. It offers the opportunity to train your mind, body, and spirit to be able to deal with what life throws at you in a way that supports your growth and development at the highest level possible. So, you know, really do appreciate um, all of this. And 
uh, Jeanette just goes, excellent. <laughs> so, you know, thank you. And for those of you that have uh, come on and watched and listened, uh, really do appreciate your time and attention. We're going to hold this to 30 minutes. We're just a few seconds past that um, right now. And, you know, our goal is to continue to do this. So share this with people. If you know somebody that is looking to talk about goals and, and wants a little push in the goal department that isn't you being a parent pushing them, here's two people from two different walks of life. And in many ways, you know, I, I'm a business coach and support Mr. Yarwood in being his business coach. And then in the rest of my life, he gets to support me as being the, the person responsible for teaching me these live skills. So I'm looking forward to that. Mr. Yarwood, any closing thoughts before we close for the day? No, I, I just want to say um, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot that goes into this and I hope, hope uh, we're getting the message across and hopefully somebody's getting something out of this and can apply it to their, to their lives, whether you do martial arts or not. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, if there's a nugget that helps you in any area, then we're fulfilling on our mission in martial arts as studies and as me as a student and Mr. Yarwood as a student and an instructor, we're fulfilling on our game by delivering this out there. Because for those of you that know, when you become a teacher, when you become an instructor, when you become a coach, you take your understanding of whatever it is you're teaching, coaching and instructing to the next level and you start to really become uh, generative in that. So really, thank you, Mr. Yarwood. We'll look forward to next week. And, yes, with, and with that, thanks for the comments, people. Thanks for joining in. Really do appreciate it from Facebook. And with that, till we meet again. See you later.